The Upwork Dream. Beaches, decide your own rates, financial freedom. You choose your clients, you do whatever you want in your pajamas, that's the secret. Does it live up to the hype? Well, there are many conflicting advisors on the internet and I was confused. So what I did was I put on my scientist hat, spent 90 days on Upwork, and now I'm here with some results. So far, I've got about $7,000, four projects completed, and great reviews. I will share with you three things I learned and a hack I found towards the end of this video. I also want to highlight, I was an outwork for a futuristic industry, the metaverse, more specifically, an Apple AR developer. I hope this will make the video more interesting because it's outwork within the context of a futuristic industry that's coming soon. So stay tuned till the end if you want to know the three hacks, no, three tips, no, three, three things I learned and the one hack at the end. Well, the first thing I learned was choosing your clients. It's not just the clients choosing you, you have to choose your clients too. To give you an example, so this was how the project was titled. We want to build the metaverse before Facebook does in three months. The budget, of course, is 10,000 pounds. Facebook is spending billions of dollars a year and spending 10 years to build a metaverse. Yeah, there are plenty of clients like this, right? Unreasonable budgets, unreasonable timelines, and expectations, really bad. You have to avoid at all costs, especially if it's long-term, if they want a long-term commitment. If it's a short-term, one day or two, yeah, why not try build the metaverse in two days? And if it fails, who cares, right? All my clients so far, I have zero complaints about. They paid well, they lived up to their word, their expectations were reasonable, no horror clients so far. The way I judge clients is by two factors. Number one, the way they write their job descriptions. So you, you see a lot of job descriptions on Upwork are like one line sentences or you know, the, it's like a teenager just wrote a message or it sounds like that more or less. Uh, but there are plenty of clients who have like detailed job description outlining what they need. You know, it just looks like a normal job description which you'll see on indeed.com or something. You wanna look out for those because that's a good sign. That means they put in the effort and this is a serious job and not just a random small gig. So the job description is number one. Number two is you can actually look at their recent history so if you look at the client profile and you will see the reviews they've given to previous freelancers and how much they've spent, those are all good signs to judge a client as well. So that's number one, right? The number one lesson I've learned. You gotta choose your clients wisely. Do not choose a client who wants to build a metaverse in two months with 10K. Now, once you know which clients to look for, the next thing is you obviously want to attract them. Just because you think you'll get a client doesn't mean they will choose you. So the second lesson I learned was on how to attract great clients. To attract great clients, you have to think like uh, you're an Amazon. So number one thing you look on Amazon, the product listing, is the reviews and the comments, right? That is social proof and you immediately get convinced. The social proof is very, very strong currency when it comes to the online world or any world really. The same is the case for Upwork. You are the product. To a client buying you, they will look at your reviews, ratings, and your trust signals. The number one key here is you want to emit the right trust signals and emit as many of them as you can, as strongly as you can. You cannot be shy about this. You have to show off in a humble way. So what are these trust signals? Well, there are two. Number one's the ratings, and number one's to the reviews. There's also a third one, which is the proposals you write. So let's go through this one by one. Ratings and reviews. When you start out, it's impossible to get a good rating or review because obviously you start out with zero ratings and reviews, right? You have no projects under your belt, nothing. So what do you do under this scenario to emit the right trust signals? You do one thing. Look at your past accomplishments, self-reflect on yourself, and list out all the key achievements relevant to your freelancing services. I realized I had a couple of trust signals. So number one was I had a PhD in brain computer interfaces, not directly related to augmented reality, but kind of related, and I did app development work there. And second, I added a portfolio of the projects I've done on the portfolio section, my PhD app work, and my YouTube channel as well, which was the third one. So my YouTube channel was entirely related about augmented reality. I had some coding tutorials there as well. So I added all of that within the proposal section. And also a good profile picture, clean background, good lighting. All of these builds towards your initial impression the client will have of you. So for you, it might be different. You might not have a doctorate title, but you may, you may have something else. You may have experience working as an app developer. You may have other things that I don't have. Use them. Think about them, reflect on them, and use them, and think of yourself as the product, and you're designing your storefront, the landing page for your client. So add as much trust signals as you can before you go looking for your first client. But do not be the person who just has your name, title, description, and starts looking. That's a bad strategy. You want to be good at marketing yourself here. 
So that is the trust signal bit. I want to also talk about the proposal bit. It, it would not always be the client coming to you. You will have to sometimes go to the client. You'll see proposals and you have to apply to different jobs and stuff. So proposals, I've got good experience in, I would say, because I've won many grants at university and I've also won many proposals on Upwork. On Upwork specifically, just like any other grants or anything, I think the art of writing proposals is three things. Number one, you have the first paragraph, which is your elevator pitch. In quick four or five sentences, you have to list all your accomplishments. There are nice punchline. Let them know that you are the best person to work for here. The second paragraph, you go into the details. So here you go talk about the relevant projects you've done, the skills you have, and examples of it. Add a lot of numbers. Add as much numbers as you can. Quantify, quantify, because quantity gives evidence of what your qualitative words. Instead of saying, I'm good at Swift, you say, I've gained good experience with Swift, which is evidence from the portfolio apps you can see on my session. I've got three apps published in the stores. I've got 68 videos on YouTube. You know, you give actual numbers and data to back up your words. So that's the second paragraph. And the third paragraph, this is important and this is very specific to Upwork. So this paragraph is where you actually outline how you're going to tackle your client's projects. So for example, if they say build us an AR app for detecting say an image on the wall, you say first number one, I'm gonna use this framework, detect the plane on the wall, and I'm gonna load the images on the app, then I'm gonna do use this class for doing this, that class for doing this, this framework for doing that. You know, go as detailed, tell them how you're actually going to accomplish it. In their head they can read it and they can think, oh my god, this is how it's done. I know he can do it because he literally laid it out. You want the client to get that impression. So that's what the third paragraph is for. Lay out that mini roadmap. But all these things adds to your favor. But to be honest, I might actually make another video going to the details of the proposal writing. The ultimate goal of the proposal is to convince the client of the value you could provide in hard data. So that's the second lesson I've learned. Sending the right trust signals to attract that great client. And ratings, reviews, and your proposals, all these things adds to your favor. Now, the third and final lesson is to do with the user experience. Well, think about when you go to the gym. A gym is not a product, right? It's a service. So the gym I go to, it's amazing. I've been to two kinds of gyms. One gym, you just go in, it's normal, right? You don't feel anything. But this gym that I've signed up to lately, it's amazing. You know why? Every time you enter the elevator, which just leads up to the gym, you can hear the music drumming up slowly, a bit at a time. But the closer you get to the gym, the music like gets louder and louder. You slowly ease into the workout mood. And once you're in the gym, it's music. The spaces are nicely laid out. There are sections. Once you're tired and the endorphins are running and you have a hard shower and you come out of it and you dress up and you leave the gym, you leave with a really, really good feeling. Like you're fresh and you can tackle anything. That's what makes me want to work out in that gym and not in my home. Because in the home, the user experience is not as refined. So user experience matters. The reason why I'm saying this is for Upwork, the same thing applies. Your client's experience of you matters. And this is not just the work you do, but outside of it. What do I mean? When it comes to the client UX, first of all, what matters is the work itself, right? You need to be able to finish the work. That is of utmost importance. Do not follow the advice of taking projects that you will just uh, figure out how to complete because if you get bad reviews, your equity and upwork goes down, your brand value goes down and you get nothing. It's once you have the work, now is the time to delight the client. You want that first review to be raving, five star. That's what I got for my work and you want the same thing for you. And to get that raving review and great rating, here you have to delight the client. And the way you delight the client and give them the nice client UX is through two things, communication and extra work. Not extra work as in, in terms of features, but extra delight points. So communication, what I mean is you have to communicate at every single point. For me, like every four days or five days for long-term projects, I would give them an update whether they asked or not. I will send them a video of the work I've done with a short text of what's happening, what's left to be done. I'll give these small regular snippets of updates. From the client's perspective, that gives them the confidence that the freelancer has not just run away, he's doing work regularly and they're giving an update. That's the ultimate aim. You want the client to be calm, happy and satisfied. So that's number one. Number two is adding extra points of delight. So although my work is just programming and not design, I make sure the apps I create is designed beautifully. I make extra effort on the shadows, the colors, the gradients. All these things I tune specifically to give a nice little polished feel and it ends up being more than what they asked for. 
for example, I have to design a prototype for a AR app and it's a prototype, so it doesn't have to be fully polished, right? But I designed it to complete perfection. They were so happy that they even gave me a bonus. Do you hear that in Upwork? Giving bonus. So yeah. So my point is the more you delight the customers, the more better you will do. So that's the client user experience. It's very, very important to give the client a great experience outside of just the work itself through communication, adding extra points of delight and being trustworthy. All these things add into your favor and in the long term will increase your brand value and your ratings and reviews. So that is very, very, very important. Now, as promised, I'll give you the final hack I found, which was obviously you won't find anywhere on the internet because it's too early to be written. I, I went in thinking that there will not be many Apple AR jobs because Apple AR is not that established, right? The Apple glasses are not out, Apple heads is not out. Apple in the metaverse is not yet a thing. That's why I went out with the backup of being an iOS developer. If you see my profile, it's iOS developer slash Apple AR. But what I realized was all of my jobs were Apple AR and all of the iOS jobs I saw were much lower paying ones. Why is this? It's to do with niching down and being a large fish in a small pond. And the more futuristic niche and untested grounds the technology is in that you're selling yourself for, the better. I'm talking about blockchain, Web3, NFT, Solidity programming, AR, VR, Apple AR, all of that, right? Because the thing is, for these kind of technologies, futuristic technologies, unestablished ones, there are less developers out there who are skilled in it. Because they are very niche at the moment, they're not mainstream. Because there's less developers in there, the pond might be smaller, but you get to be the larger fish in that small pond.